The Czech VZ-52, let's check it out. After World War II, when the Axis fell, Czech was part of the Axis, and they were invaded by the Russians. Uh, the Soviet Union took over and formed the Eastern Bloc, and Czechoslovakia just was one of those countries. But one of the things about Czech is that it's always been a little bit of a black sheep in a Red Sea. Uh, they had a very thriving firearms tradition, making really exceptional guns way before World War II, even in World War I and before. We have here one of the Czech VZ-52s. Now this is a transitional rifle that went beyond the bolt action. And because of the success of the Garand and a lot of other countries started developing semi-automatic rifles for their mainline infantry, uh, they went to a semi-automatic version. Uh, this is a 10 round box fed magazine with 7.62 by 4.5 which is a little more powerful and accurate than the 7.62 by 39. But one of the things about the Russians, and of course really makes sense, is they wanted standardized ammunition and firearms all throughout the Eastern Bloc. I mean, they were allies. Later on, Czech was pressured into making this rifle into 7.62 by 39, which is the VZ-52-57. And then was quickly replaced with the VZ-58, which is an assault rifle that is similar to the AK-47, but yet has a lot of differences as well. And again, the checks are the black sheep. Now these have gotten fairly hard to find, even though according to my sources, over 1 million of these were made. All except the first 5,000 were actually made by CZ, but this is still called the VZ-52. So while importation of these has been a little bit hit or miss, uh, Classic Firearms just got a nice lot of military surplus VZ-52s and uh, I got in touch with them and they sent this one for this test and evaluation. Well, overall, this is a beautiful rifle. And of course, it's got, you know, wear and tear on it, whether it's being stored or carried in the field. And these were used in a number of different conflicts all across the world. Uh, Cuba is one country that really liked these. So they, some of these were imported. They did serve in Vietnam and they did serve in Grenada, of all places. There's a lot of different locations where these are found. Now this rifle fit the same role as the SKS, and of course the SKS was chambered in 7.62 by 3.9, but it was a 10 round fixed box magazine, but semi-automatic, and a lot of the design is the same as it is on the VZ-52. Of course, first thing we're gonna do is remove our magazine, have a little catch right here, it pops out. Uh, it does rock in like your AK mag, similar to it, but it just pops it right out. It's a 10 round box fed magazine. We're going to check the chamber, and the gun is empty. Um, now, this is a very smooth bolt action, and it is reciprocating the charging handle, so you're going to get that pullback, but it's on the other side. Now, these do function in the 7.62 by 3.9 version, the 5.257, uh, but they're not quite as reliable, and a lot of that has to do with the shortness of the 7.62 by 3.9. But again, just put your magazine in, rock it forward. The gun did come with two 10-round magazines, but typically they were fed with stripper clips. But our surplus ammo came in 15-round boxes, just like this, with 7.62 Model 52. Uh, here we have a 7.62 by 4.5 and a 7.62 by 3.9, which is your standard uh, AK or SKS ammunition. 4.5 designates this case as being 45 millimeters in height, and then with the 39, 39 millimeters. And so you do have a difference in the size. Uh, this is a 133 grain bullet. The 7.62 by 39 has a 123 grain bullet. 
Now the 7.62 by 45 is a little bit more accurate and you have more ballistics. It has about 100 to 200 feet per second greater velocity than your 3.9. Now with the 7.62 by 45 you're getting better ballistics than even a 30.30. Uh, it's more like the 300 Savage. But guys, I don't really want to sugarcoat it. Uh, this ammo is fairly difficult to find. You can find it in the surplus, but uh, it's usually kind of pricey. I think for the 330 round uh, 10 we got from SG Ammo, it was around $200, $220. Now, one of the most recognizable features of the VZ-52 is the side folding bayonet. And right here is the release button for the bayonet. When you punch it, watch it pop out. So we hit the button, pops it out brings it out just like this. When you're ready to bring it back in, hit the button, there it goes. As you can see, it is a very thin bayonet, but that allows it to kind of be out of the way when it's on the side of your rifle. It's a 21 and a half inch barrel. They didn't start chrome lining them until later, so a lot of the corrosive ammo, you're going to need to make sure that you clean this uh, to take care of that corrosive ammo. It does have a nice heat shield right here that's all steel. The front side has a post. Typically there was a hood that went over this, but this one doesn't have it. And then we have a threaded barrel. And so and it's kind of funny because it is right hand threads. This is probably designed for, you know, a grenade launcher or some kind of blank firing device. Has a graduated rear sight, goes from 100 meters all the way out to 1,000 meters. Have a sling loop here at the front and also here at the rear. The trigger guard is a little reminiscent of the Garand because of the safety. So you can just push that safety out of the way. Then the trigger action, a little bit of a wall right here, then a nice clean break. Now the butt pad is a nice cap that fits over the end of the stock and there's a small little catch right here. Uh, some you can depress. For us, we're going to have to use a screwdriver and you can just pull that off. Uh, it does have a small little detent at the bottom that holds in the bottom. And here in the bottom you have a place for a cleaning kit and this is also a metal cap. So this is going to protect the butt stock. Take the butt cap, put it on the bottom first, rock it in, and just snap it into place. Number and a proof mark and then we have 53 which means this rifle was made in 1953 and then we have serial numbers. Now one of the things about 7.62 by 45 is you've got to find the ammo and I got this ammo at SG Ammo. Uh, they just had some surplus and so I picked up about 400 rounds but uh, it looks really clean, really good in these boxes. They actually sent them in these tins which I was really pleased with but that's going to be the one downside to this rifle. Now the box magazine holds 10 rounds so you can just load it right in like any other magazine. What I don't understand is why they didn't maybe develop a 20 round magazine for this. I think that would be cool. Just like for the SKS. Mm -hmm. So we have 10 rounds. So we have our latch right here. Just bring it down. It unlocks it. Uh, when you're going to put it back in, you kind of rock it in just like that. Uh, to me, much smoother than the AK. Definitely better than the SKS with that fixed box magazine. Charging handle right here. Just bring it to the rear. Feeds it around right into the chamber. Man, that was really smooth. Now, one unique feature about the VZ-52 is you have the forward left ejecting. Uh, and this is really different from what you're seeing with most rifles. In fact, I've never seen that. Now shooting the VZ-52 was a pleasure. I mean, it's a very balanced rifle. It's a, that heavy wood stock with all the steel parts, really smooth action, very reliable as far as the rifle goes. Now we had a couple of issues because we were shooting surplus ammunition. And you know, the ammunition was made back probably in the 50s or 60s. So overall though, it was really reliable. I mean, the short stroke piston, to me, this is more enjoyable to shoot than the SKS, even though I'm really a big fan of the SKS, especially considering the ammo is so readily available and so inexpensive. Uh, but to me, this just goes a step above. I mean, the quality is just a lot better as far as the finish and the metal parts. We really had a lot of fun shooting. Now, one thing that really surprised us was the accuracy, uh, even with iron sights. Now, we were just shooting at 50 yards because, you know, with iron sights, we didn't want to go all over the paper. 
But um, Robbie Wheaton really put a solid group using these iron sights. Now we had a couple of range days, uh, first off with Robbie Wheaton from Wheaton Arms. You know, he's a big guy, he was able to handle it really well, I mean the gun just was very smooth. Uh, then Sarah Mack really enjoyed shooting this rifle, and uh, she's not quite as experienced, but was able to handle the recoil, in fact really enjoyed it. The second day I went down with one of my buddies, Derek, uh, who happens to be a Patreon member, and we went out, did a lot of shooting with it, just had a fun, relaxing day with this rifle. And to be honest with you, I just wanted to get it back out. Now being that really smooth action, just fits well on your shoulder, the balance is right. And uh, this makes for a very enjoyable day at the range, if you can find the ammo. Now the weight on this rifle was nine pounds, 1.6 ounces. So again, it's not a lightweight option, but definitely somewhat compact. Again, the balance is excellent. Um, these came in either a walnut or a beech stock. Usually have some kind of yellow lamination or lacquer on them. Uh, you can find some that have a little bit of a green tint. There's a number of different ones. In fact, when I was looking at Classic, they had a lot of different variations with these stocks. A lot of times they'll come with an enamel base covering maybe the dust cover or especially here on the handguard. And so I think that was just to keep corrosion down. But a very iconic piece. Uh, the, the one big downside to this rifle is the ammo availability. I mean, it's hit or miss. Again, it is typically corrosive. Uh, it would be nice if a lot of these started coming in that maybe Privy Partisan or Red Army Standard would make some ammo for these. That would be incredible. Uh, there are some conversion kits where you can have a sleeve you put inside the chamber uh, for 7.62 by 39, but it's typically using epoxy and that could be an issue. Plus your magazines really function the best with the 4.5 ammo. The barrel is press fit and pinned. It is a gas operated tilting breech lock action. Now it does hold open on the last round fired uh, and there there is a magazine catch so you can drop the magazine and it's just a little knob right up under it you just push it up if you want to just have the bolt open without the magazine in it then of course release and it goes home and on either side of this handguard there is a release you just press them at the same time you can pull this whole piece right off now if we bring the bolt back like this uh, you can see that this will actually, just a really short stroke piston. And so this just allowed for really smooth operation. But you'll notice how just a little bit of movement right here would release that bolt. Now this is a steel cover over the piston and with the bolt back, just bring it back a little bit and then pull up and let it go forward. And then that'll pull this little plate out. And then we're going to bring our kicker out and you can see it has a spring, pretty large spring right here. And then it just goes back into place right there. Then we bring our plate back in, drop it, lock it in, and you're good to go. Now we're going to show you a little bit about the bolt. So we're going to let it go forward. What we want to do is bring this plate, just hand, bring it down. And there's a little place you have to find where it'll release. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Lift it up. And now keep that spring. There's a big spring, recoil spring under tension. What we want to do is push it like this <laughs> well maybe not like that but it allows this to come out and you want to get it it's just kind of captivated right here and these little notches allow you to push it with your fingers short little guide rod but putting this back this spring can get kinked so we're going to be careful with doing that now there's a small catch uh, when you're pulling your bolt back that will release it and you have to kind of tilt it i've been working on this for 20 minutes i can't find it graham bates did a review where he pulled his out it seemed to be a little looser uh, the bolt fit so um, you want to check his channel out if you really want to see how this thing comes out because guys i am not able to find that little catch but here underneath you can see the tilting design how when it comes together it just locks up into place and then it drops down when you pull it out now your bolt assembly there's a small hole you just go ahead and put your uh, spring in there it's going to bind somewhat so you have to be really careful to to get this just right so I'm going to try to stabilize it on the recoil guide rod. Once you get it in, you want to put it into this little notch right there. And that holds it into place. Then on your dust cover, there's a little catch. You want to get it on the back of that 
little spring, just like that. We'll bring our dust cover forward, get into the grooves, and then it locks back in. To return your handguard, just place it in the top, then snap it into place like this, and it locks it in. Now, if you're really looking for a great piece of history, military surplus, and you just really like those type firearms, the VZ-52 is definitely something to take a look at. Um, and right now, with the lot that's come in from Classic Firearms, I think they're selling them for like $4.99. So on GunBroker before, they're going for six, seven, and eight hundred dollars a piece. And so this gives you a chance to come in and buy them at a good, decent price. Finding the ammo is definitely going to be an issue. Uh, but you should get on GunBroker. You can probably find it here or there, which I did see some listings. Of course, that's before this video. Had a great experience overall. And again, I want to thank the guys over at Classic Firearms for sending the VZ-52. Uh, I love these old rifles. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. is 45 meters in height and then the 39 39 meters in height meters this is 39 meters in height so when i hit that release it pops it i can just bring it right out as a graduate has a graduated rear has a graduate graduated that is going to be the one downside that's going to be the one downside to having a good time just 762 by 39 no <laughs> You feel like you're NASCAR or something with that shirt on. I am. I race cars. Ah! Ah, he's a turkey! <laughs> Die, rubber dummy!